Hi, welcome to Evolution Greenworks, episode 12. Uh, today I've got an exciting show for you today. It's a whole new take on in the environment and what are we doing towards the environment. I have a special guest with me who has started, well, he's the founder. So his name is Derek Earl, and he's at the on the chair, <laughs> he's the chair of the board for uh Biz for Climate. And what is that and what is that all about? Welcome, Derek. Hi, thank you for having me today. Thank you for having th thank you for coming. Like, tell me a little bit more about about what is the what is the idea behind Biz for Climate? Like, why are why did you choose that name first? I guess. Yeah, thank you. So very pleased to be here to talk to you more about Biz for Climate and explain what this initiative is about and and really start sharing this story. So. Biz for Climate, it's about business leaders for climate action. And this is kind of a, a short form around the name, but the idea and what we're doing with this new organization is that we're organizing and mobilizing business leaders to promote climate action, to promote and advocate for transitioning to a very clean and low carbon economy. And also to advocate in that we recognize that we need public policies to shape this transition and to get us there with the speed and at the scale that's required by the challenges of climate change that the world is starting to face and also by the, the economic challenges and opportunities that are associated to it. Excellent. So what has been the interest since you started this up and how long has it been? Like how long ago did you start this? It's relatively new, right? It's brand new. Yeah. We've um, been working on the plans and this idea has been gradually coming together for about the past year and a half. And just over this past year, um, spent a lot of time on this during COVID and during the lockdowns. It's been a great time to start a new global movement. Right. So <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, really going into last summer, we uh, came together and we uh, incorporated as a new not-for-profit organization called Biz for Climate. And it was really in late fall when we actually started taking this out to market and reaching out to the business community. And how are and you received in that business community? Well, the response has been very positive um, on a number of fronts. So we've we, we've started slowly and, and quietly to, to roll this out as we are very new. So we've been um, reaching out through our networks, um, personally inviting companies, but also introducing ourselves to the existing business organizations, the existing environmental organizations to kind of introduce what we're trying to do, our goals, um, how we align on things. And by and large, the response has been very positive. Um, kind of the, the foundational piece to this and the key action, how we're starting to organize the support and to, to mobilize this collective action right, and call to action for, for um, movement on climate change, is that we're inviting companies to, to sign what we call the Climate Action Pledge. So there's a document you can check out on our website at bizforclimate.com. And it's a very simple process. There's a, the, the Climate Action Pledge essentially states three things. That one, that we agree that climate change is an urgent problem. Secondly, that climate action is actually better economic strategy. We think there's a compelling economic argument of why we should be going all in to build that clean economy as a better strategy. It will get us better outcomes. And thirdly, that public policy is required to help shape this transition and to get us there at the speed and scale required. So we need to advocate for those things that are more at the systemic level and go beyond what an individual company could do on their own. So this is bringing the companies together to start to you know, influence the, the public policy dialogue to raise awareness on this, to bring more voices to the table and to bring voices to the table that were maybe not as engaged on this issue, but are now willing to speak up, use their clout, use their use their um, their names as a business and a corporation uh, to join this call for action. And to date, we have now over 70 companies who have signed the Climate Action Pledge. To get wow. Started. So you've got 70. Are these uh, Manitoba companies? Uh, mostly Manitoba companies. Uh, we okay. do have a couple from Ontario and one from Alberta that have that have signed on to this. Oh, the, okay. The vision is that this can grow and that it's being set up so that it may scale. But 
We are a group of local business owners that started this initiative. Our networks are local and, and very strong here. So the organic growth is going to be very local in nature, but it, it, it's already a goal that this could scale. And we'd like it to scale. We'd like to have thousands of companies that sign this climate action plan. So are you going to fo focus on like North America, like, or are you talking about Canada in general? So the, the focus, let's say, is, is probably Canada in a, you know, in a certainly a short and even medium term time frame right. in terms of we, we have to build something that we can we can action as well and, and to manage. So, like I say, the organic growth we expect to come through through Manitoba, but we're also having conversations with partners at the national level and at the international level, because although our focus is probably more now on mobilizing local businesses and right. inviting them to support us in this call to action, um, we are very much part of a global movement to do this. The global economy is starting to shift to go low carbon. There's many organizations out there that are that are in line with what we're doing. So we're we're very much part of that local or that global um, approach to this as well. And that's what we've all known and heard for a long time, right? The approach to global warming and climate change is that it's the, 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 message, local, the, the yeah, that messaging has been coming loud and clear for, for quite a few years now. I mean, I can remember, like I've been in business with uh, Evolve Green for 13 years and I can remember number one question. I said I was a renewable energy company right yeah. the number one question was what does that mean <laughs> yeah i think i think anybody could recite that these days i think it the messages and messages are out there they know about climate they know that it's constantly changing and that uh human influence needs to stop um and that we need to clean up what we currently have as well and so your hope is to pull in all these companies and make it easier for them to speak as one voice is that the idea yeah i think that's very well put that's a that's a that's a, a great way to sum up a lot of what this exercise is about um to to come together with uh with a common voice around this issue so that we can raise awareness we can maybe bring in those into this debate that have been previously less engaged on calling for action on climate change like i think we're at a moment where we're we're starting the the the, the level of concern is quite widespread and quite mainstream now in society. Um, it's become very much a top issue, an election issue. It's top of mind for citizens, for, for voters, et cetera. What to, to get us there, to, like what the like what the best science is telling us and in terms of the things like the, the Paris Accord, which is the international agreement, the best that we have in terms of all the countries coming together to say we are going to agree to, to, do, to uh, try and limit the amount of global warming. And here's some pathways to do it. And, you know, the more optimistic of those scenarios to get us there, that's what they call the 1.5 degrees warming. We want to try and limit to that the best we can. Limit the GHG. Limit the amount of, of, of Carbon. You know, greenhouse gas that's that's contributing to the, the rise in temperature and destabilizing the, the climates globally. Right. Um, so, like, to get us on... On that path, it requires both speed and scale. Like we're talking to hit those targets globally, we have to limit our emissions within less than 10 years. And by 2050, so in less than 30 years to, to virtually get down to zero. That's massive. So it means we have to take action in every single industry, every single sector of the economy, because the climate and the economy are linked. And it's this collective output of the way we use resources, the way we produce, the way we consume, the way we constructed our economies that is, you know, contributing to that at the global level. It's such a wasteful uh, setup that we have too. multi-tier things that don't last as long. Why? Because it's, you know, more advantageous and you make more money if you have to replace it. Um, you know, things that used to last 50 years now last two years, you know, um, but so there's a lot of things behind that. This is a, a companies that are, are, are pledging to do better. They're pledging to stand up. They're pledging, not necessarily that they are an environmental company. They're not all environmental companies, but what they're trying to say when they stand up is that we are trying to do better. And that is not the same solution for every company. Uh, I think let's be clear about this. I mean, you know, try to keep less paper, try to recycle your your stuff within the office, try to 
um, eliminate waste, um, you know, work leaner. Those types of things are all a part of that, making your vehicles um, consume less energy in order to operate them and their um, offices as well. I think this is all a part of the bigger picture and they're all kind of starting to do this on some front. And I find one of the biggest ones is transportation has been really aggressive. I think, and I don't know that Manitobans really know about this, but transportation industry, we're talking, you know, from city buses all the way to uh, trucking industry, all of them have been working very hard at using less energy and that can come in many forms. That's not just, you know, them becoming an electric car or anything by that stretch. Um, but all of the engines and how they operate to the lighting systems, uh, all of these things, um, longer lasting batteries, you know, so it's really already making an impact. And um, so what what types of companies have already signed up for you and that take interest in, in, in Biz for Climate? Thank, thank you for that. That's uh, that brings up some great um, elements to this and that. Yeah, our goal with, with Biz for Climate is to be very broad based in terms of the, the types of companies that are that are getting behind this. And again, the key is that they're adding their voice as a business owner and saying, you know what, I'm an employer, I invest here, we pay corporate taxes, like we like we are contributors to this to this economy. We are key stakeholders in this economy, and we want to go further faster on this transition. Right? That's what we're coming together to say. And so we represent everything from financial services, manufacturing digital media and technology companies, agriculture, retail, food services, architecture, oh, mining service companies, construction, education, renewable energy companies, um, film production. There's This is with 70 companies, right? So I think this is a, a, the first snapshot of the range and diversity of companies that are going to start to want to add their names to this. Absolutely. And as they do so, this is where we're going to have some influence because really the, the strategy to, to put it very simply, we're going to build a really long and impressive and diverse list of companies. And then we're going to take that and tell that story. And did say, did you know that we now have 500 companies locally that have signed the climate action pledge? And here's what it's calling for. Whether we have a thousand companies or. And, and, and it comes down to just, just saying, Hey, you know, uh, paper versus plastic or eliminating plastic or all these different companies do vastly different things you know yeah. whether it be the farmer trying to be more organic whether it whatever what have you but it, it's about the voices you know people tell me all the time oh our voice doesn't matter that's not true we would not be where we are today without our voices mattering in anything okay. so if we're and talking about even 10 years ago there was almost no voice in this area right you know this. I would, I would add on that front that we have a, a range of size of companies too. Like, so no company is too small to sign this climate action pledge and add their names to what we're trying to do. From the solo business owner to the local, you know, corner uh, shopkeep owner with one or two employees to the the multinational. Like, there's a place for everyone. And I think maybe an important note to add as well is that you don't already have to be a, a clean company to get there. You don't have to have achieved those goals. All you have to do is like, yeah, I agree that this is an issue and I want to add my name and I think we should go in that direction. Then we can start to, you know, continue to build that voice and that message. We yeah. can be your first entry into taking some sort of climate action by signing on to this. And then we can help point you to resources if you want to do more in your company to look at how you operate. Are there different things that could manage your own carbon footprint or environmental footprint? And you can also look at the products and services you develop that there's a lot of solutions that are required out there which are huge opportunities for business owners and for entrepreneurs. And that's, that is another theme that's going to run through this in that we, we talk about climate change and there's a lot of problems and there's a lot of things that need to be solved and we need, we need solutions. And how but do you get solutions though, without voices, you need to have the voices from many different walks of life, uh, uh, industries, uh, chiming in because the solution is not simple. And it's not. No. It requires so many different people to speak up and give their opinion and come to the right solution for all these different things that are going on. Absolutely. And along that same line, there's there's arguably no group of people that are more innovative 
than entrepreneurs who, sure. you know, if you look at any of the leading, any of the leading and best practice material on developing your business plan and starting and scaling a company, what are they, what's the number one question they ask for you is like, what problem are you solving for your customer? Right. Well, guess what? On the climate change file, there are a lot of problems that are waiting for solutions. And, you know, the, the innovation, the, the risk taking to being bold, uh, to being entrepreneurial and are thinking about how we can tackle this stuff, that is going to be one of the most effective ways that we can tackle a lot of these problems. And we should encourage that because that's also the path to the type of economic prosperity yeah. that we want to achieve. We want a, an economy that supports yeah. our, our lifestyles and our well being and has good paying jobs and, you know, is better for our health absolutely um, and those, for our those, children those and our children's children right we have to build a future and right now it it, it you know it is now a work in pro progress we're seeing governments get on board with this now so it's not like a, this endless stream of pushing and pushing and pushing and trying to see if it's going to move somewhere and we're going to make headway we are making headway yeah. but this action plan is enabling the business owners in Manitoba and across Canada and hopefully growing beyond um, to have a voice and to have some resources and to make a pledge to do better. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Once again, very, very well put. Um, it's, and I think you're right. I mean, the level of attention is there and probably unprecedented in terms of the way that governments are, are, are looking at this and taking it seriously and starting to, to work on plans. And it is starting to move, but we want to we want to add some momentum to this, and we want to we want to get this thing rolling downhill, or get to that tipping point. You know that famous tipping point where we can really start to achieve some real like some clear and meaningful progress on this, and that that requires everyone. Like we've Absolutely. we've all got to get behind this. So. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to have to take a short break and we're going to hear from our sponsor, Evolve Green. Uh, after the break, though, Derek, I'd really like to talk about the immediate future plans of, uh, of what you're doing and, and how are you like getting out to your people, your, your customers? And I, I'll call it customers, but, you know, other businesses, how are we how are you reaching them? You know, so if you could uh, let me know that after the break, that would be great. So we're just going to break for a quick sponsor message. Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right, I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid connected, off grid and battery backup systems are 100% right off in the year you purchase for any company or farm. Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca. Welcome back, Evolutionaries. Episode 12, we're having an exciting conversation with Derek Earle from, uh, from biz for climate and how they're getting other companies involved in working towards a more sustainable future. It's been extremely uh, great information. Uh, so what do you want to do as a company or a sole owner? Do you want to talk to these guys? Do you want to see if you want to sign the pledge? Well, here's the thing. It's very simple. You just go to www.biz for climate.com it's right on the bottom there and you can sign the pledge too and just all you need to do is say hey we as a company want to do more welcome back derek how are you i'm great thanks again for for having me here great discussion 
Excellent. So want to know now that you've got started, because that's kind of the big piece, getting that under your belt. So now that you're up and running and you're starting to get your feet on the ground and figure out stuff, what is the goal over the next 12 months or so? So we're, we're really focused on, on, on two areas. The, the, number one, and this is the foundation of, of everything we're doing, and it's how we're going to grow our impact, is to continue to invite signatories to this Climate Action Pledge. It's, it's the number one most effective thing we can do that companies can do to help support this along the way. I should mention that there's no cost, there's no work required. It, it, it does take 30 seconds to, to fill it out. And then we'll start to carry that message forward and keep you engaged along the way and give you resources and information and, and all, lots of good stuff to come. So we're, focused, we're very much focused on that. And at the same time, as a brand new and not-for-profit organization, we are also doing some capacity building for the organization. So we have we have taken a you know a, a, a steady approach out of the gate to to start to um, invite companies to you know test our messaging to to see how this is resonating and to make sure we've got the systems in place so when the time comes and this does go exponential and we uh, we go viral out there um, that our systems don't crash as well so we've been working on things like that and, and looking at how we build capacity for the organization. Excellent, excellent. So that's very interesting. So it's really about getting the message out there. Um, so people need to go to that website. They need to read the pledge. Um, so it's very exciting. Do you plan or think you're going to be also becoming involved in policy making in Manitoba or Canada with uh, once you have the strength of companies behind you? So I don't see our role as much in the policy making sphere. We, these are things we want to approach with, with a partnership type of approach, which will, on the one hand, we want to be able to link up businesses to resources that can really help them in their own business become more sustainable and, and do those things because ultimately right. we're going to, have to be the ones that, that sort of validate or give you the tools on that. We'll, we'll, we'll link you up to that. On the policy side, similar. We're not a think tank. I don't see us getting heavy into the research. Our role is going to be about mobilizing that, that base of companies. And I think ultimately the vision for this is that the companies are the advocates, right? Oh, so right. We, get, we get them engaged. We, we help to, you know, inform you of issues, give you resources for those that want to take another step further. We want to give you options to, to go further. Here's an issue you could weigh in. Here's something happening in your community. Here's something happening nationally. Here's a, you know, here's a, a public engagement process you can weigh into. So we want to tee these things up to make it real easy and ideally a one or two click process. And yes, I support here. But the companies, we'd like them to be go, become advocates in their own right. And maybe this is a simple way to think about it. In that, let's say, and let's say we 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 uh, you know have a hundred companies that have signed this. And we're now representing a hundred. We might write a letter on an issue and say we we support uh, policy X, and we represent a hundred com com companies. Or better, one hundred companies send a letter on that same issue, and we think that ultimately will will have more traction and impact. So. We'd ultimately like to encourage the, the companies to be, be you know, empowered and confident and, and equipped to, to use their voice on would you Would you see this as eventually you guys would be doing the, the letter of concern uh, up and then the companies would then attach their signatures to it if they felt that was something they were in, in, in favor of? Like, I'm just trying to see where this could go in the future, not necessarily where you are now. Yeah, I'd say that's uh, that's the type of idea that I think we're, we're talking about. Because you said about. advocate. That's what brings to mind that you would, you know, Correct. say, yeah. oh, we see this. This is a problem. Uh, we state a problem with possible solutions and then it, and then send it out to our business community and they can all, you know, sign up or not sign up depending on whether or not they believe in what they're seeing, right? Obviously. Yeah, correct. And then, so the idea is if you choose, like, aside from signing the Climate Action Pledge, which states kind of some general principles that um, really everyone should be able to get behind, um, the, so choosing to go further and weighing in on specific issues, I think you would mm -hmm. choose to do that in the name of your company. Like, right. nobody's giving us a blank check to use their company name for or against policies as we see fit. That's, that's not at all the approach. We'll carry the general message and we'll tell the story that we now have 70 climate action signatories in whatever the numbers we get to as we grow this. And that itself is a powerful message. 
But as we start to encourage companies to go further, then they would choose to go further and, you know, as individuals and as, as their companies. So I think that's an important um, uh, point to how, how that's going to work. Absolutely. So my next question is like, have, how have you grown? Like, do you have like um, a, a bunch of board of directors? Like, how, like what's the driving force behind uh, Biz for Climate? So we're, we're run by a, a board of directors. There's seven of us that came together, um, all representing um, most are, are, you know, executives and owners of local businesses in Manitoba. Um, the idea is that this is to be business led. So we want uh, business people on the board. Um, and yeah, so we've come together. We're really powered like by, by volunteers. We've started to attract some, some corporate sponsorship and things like that. And that's part of the strategy of how we're going to, to grow the organization. So Small plug. If anyone's interested, we also have a great uh, way to get your name out to a group of companies that are have all you know aligned on values of climate action. Um, so, what do what do they get when they do a, a corporate sponsorship? Like, what does that what does that entail? Talk, tell me about that. Again, fairly early days in in developing you know what the what those packages will look like, but we're talking about sort of branding and visibility and promotion. Uh, you know, through logos onto our, we have a newsletter now that we've uh, got a couple editions out. We have social media channels where we're, we're making those kind of promotions on the website. So those are sort of the main tools. Okay. So that they, if they're, um, you know, doing some sort of a sponsor, sponsor, sponsorship level. Oh my goodness. It's one of those days. Anyways, um, you know, they're going to get whatever ABC kind of package for, for advertising their company and what they're, what they're supporting. Correct. Like at, at this point, I'd say if anyone happens to be interested, you know, as a follow up to this, reach out to me directly. I'm Derek at Biz for Climate. Um, info at Biz for Climate from our website comes to me as well. Um, and then we can we can talk about it and we can see what what the interest is. And we, you know, we'd love to have those conversations for sure. Well, I thought it was really important to get the messaging out there because I think most companies aren't aware that you're around yet. And I, I really want to create a platform for you to tell everybody about this new action plan for companies. I mean, it's not, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, if your heart is there and you as a company believe in this pledge, um, you can sign up. It's not that nobody's asking you for anything other than your attention. Uh, and you know, even that it's, it's at your own pace, right? So, cause every industry is different and it's impacting each and it, and let's be clear, the, the environmental impact is happening straight across the board on all industries at this point, Absolutely. but how it's being tackled is different, you know? Yeah. And, and think about this, that remember our intent is to influence in that policy sphere, right? So mm -hmm. let me give you an example, like, and, and bring it down to an individual level example that maybe people can resonate with. Because if they're looking at this as a company and saying, well, you know, I, I'm interested in signing, but we're not yet as green as we'd like to be. Like, I don't want to open myself up to criticism on this, or, you know, I don't want to be called out for greenwashing. There's, there are, there are legit concerns about things like that. But right. think of it in an individual context. Like, and, and I'll say this, and I'll admit this, I, I do not own an electric car yet on my list, you know, like I, you know, my next one, I, I sure hope list. Yeah. Bucket list. Well, even hopefully next, next vehicle list. I hope that's the, uh, the plan. But for example, like, so I don't yet own one, right? I would support a policy that, you know, invests more in public charging stations and high-speed charging and, and puts that in as a, as a policy direction, even though I'm not there yet, right? So I don't have to be an electric car owner to have the right to support that. Yes. So that's kind of the thing we're talking about here. Like you don't have to be there yet, but you have to support that. We got to go there faster. And I support us going there faster and let's get on with it. And we'll, we'll support the measures that need, or need well, yeah, to get like I, I live, I live an hour and a half from Winnipeg. So I'm pretty darn rural. So for me to get an electric vehicle is pretty scary yeah. because we don't have local charging stations yet. So yeah, I agree with you. I, I would and did actually, when I ran for the Liberals, I wrote that into the plan. I, I, I believe we should have charging stations across Manitoba. And I think it should be offered up to the gas stations because that's just a natural place. And you know, you swipe your credit card, you have your fast charger, you plug, plug it in. I mean, it's a natural uh, other source of income for them. And no, of course, they're already Canada, there. If you're in Prada, if you're ever driving out to Falcon Lake, they've got those Tesla charges set up. Over. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So, and, and I actually know the boys that set them up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a small, um, uh, small business community here in Manitoba, for sure. 
It, it really is actually uh, the renewable energy community is actually not huge. Uh, and most of us do know each other. So like the Tesla guys, actually they work for Tesla. There's a group of them in Canada and they work out of Ontario. So they go across Canada putting in charging stations for Tesla. <laughs> you know what, I, I just want to add a point before, because we talked about kind of the, the corporate sponsorship uh, piece and not, not to go back and harp on that, but uh, I just want to add this point as well, that this is intended to be a business led and a private sector movement. So we are not government funded and we are not seeking government funding in terms of what we're doing. Like we are going to build this, um, you know, on the merits of what we do um, and, and with the support of the businesses that are helping us to, that are getting on board with the cause. So. Yeah, so it's completely um, you know, led by. It's, it's, sometimes you hear not for profit and you think it's a government funded group. Like, that's not the case oh, yeah. with what we're building here. No, but there are quite a few non for profits that are um, yeah. and, and do get um, various funding for doing various functions, um, usually but, taking over things that the government doesn't really have time to do. Um, whether yeah, it be education, you, you, you drill for it. It's like just, that. it's just. Uh, I want to clarify that, and that's our approach is really to have this as a business led movement, kind of by business for business, uh, bring on message to people. That is, that is exactly why I was so excited about it, though. It, it didn't really ask for anything. It just asked for your attention, and it asked for you to just read this. Is if this is how you feel, sign. You know, I mean that. Yeah. To me, it just the advocacy and the just giving a voice and creating a collective for a voice is is really huge because you know companies don't just re represent one individual you know it can be all the way up to you know hundreds of employees right it can be one person it can be hundreds um, uh, but i think when you get a company behind an idea and you get now 70 companies behind an idea and then tomorrow maybe it's 140 companies behind that set idea and maybe 500 next month i mean that's pretty exciting and that is a big deal yeah. it is a big deal and you get um government and industry starting to say wait a minute we have this many people saying that we should be looking at X or we should be, you know, moving in this direction. And I think that's really important. Um, and you also have that many people in the queue that you can quickly reach out to and say, this is what's going on. You know, can you add your voice to this? So, and you know what, they, they've just been great in coming forward with suggestions and ideas and referrals and and how can I help is often the the question we're getting from those that are signing on. So there's, there is an absolutely amazing group of business owners right across this province and across this country, frankly. And yeah. there's also a bit of a myth out there that often, you know, business is part of the problem. There's, you know, we're going to show that like business is part of the solution. There are many, many people that are very concerned about the state of the state of the climate. They want to get on board. They want to be part of the solution. And they're excited about what this gives them a chance to do because they don't necessarily feel represented by some of the other um, organizations out there on the, on this issue and that's been exciting to see as well and that gets me fired up when people want to say yeah let's let's do this and we're looking for something and I think sometimes like when we're talking to individuals about different opportunities for business uh, here in Manitoba they really feel grass is greener somewhere else it's funny how Manitobans don't always know what's here um, what I like about this initiative is it really shows us how many companies are here and all the diverse things that they're doing. Um, and, you know, because that's getting out to other company owners who, hey, I didn't know there was steel working going on here. I didn't know. And I know that was interesting when I was reading over the list. I think I was, I don't know, maybe it was only 25 at the time when, when you presented this opportunity to me. But I still found it quite interesting to see diverse uh, types of businesses. Um, and I know that I am 100%, I love to be as local as possible with what we do. Um, so this is another piece. And this is an environmental piece too, really, when you think about it. Um, we've become so... It's so messy, the messaging now. You know, you don't have three stations on the TV and that's your only, and a couple of radio stations, you know. We have the internet now and people are doing this online and that online. And it's really hard, even if it's your neighbor, to get a message. Unless you walk up to them and say, I'm here and this is the message, right? So having this kind of a community stronghold of networking so that we can get these messages out to the the businesses in question 
um, and they see each other. This is a pretty incredible thing. So it makes it local. Uh, I know you want to expand this way, but everybody's going to look at their local piece yeah, of that. Absolutely. So, yeah. and I think bringing it back to local is where the success successes will be with climate. I think this is the big, big picture that we need to look yeah. at. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, like really well, really well said. That's a great uh, synopsis of a lot of how this is intended to work. And already we've been hearing from signatories as we, we started to have that second level of conversations like, okay, we signed up, but now like how can we maybe engage further and are there things we can do to help the cause and what does that look like? So we're, we're working on that. We're starting to figure the, the, these pieces out, but there's, there's definitely some interest there. And one of the one of the themes is around this idea of connecting with other companies, learning from what others are doing, how are they how are they approaching this issue, whether it be best practices or, or just sharing or this like there's a lot we can achieve together on our own businesses, on the impact we're having within our own communities. But but then of course at the high level of this is, you know, how our voices come together to uh, to you know to drive us forward on this issue. Absolutely. Well, you know, Derek, it's been amazing talking to you about um, Biz for Climate today. And like I said, I signed up. I believe in what you're doing. Uh, I want to get the message out to other companies. Hey, take the pledge. Just take the pledge. And, and also see what's local for everybody. I think that's amazing. I wanted to just throw in just this little bit. Uh, true to all Manitobans, you know, I'm the host of Evolution Greenworks for MBNS TV at ASTV. And... You know, I own Evolve Green. We all do multiple things. Derek, tell us what else you do. Thank you. Um, so yeah, in addition, this has become my uh, this is my volunteer um, thing, and I'm doing it on my on my own time and spending a lot of it's becoming quite all consuming. Um, started during the COVID lockdown and and carrying forward. But yeah, my day job, so to speak, is that I'm the I'm the vice president at the World Trade Center Winnipeg. So through that, I have the privilege of working with businesses right across the province. We provide services to help companies at all stages of development from the startup of like, how do I get a business plan going? I want to I want to start on this idea right up to established and global companies that are looking to trade and export internationally. So we, we, we provide advisory services. You can talk to team of business and trade advisors. We do very extensive training and um through uh, mainly through uh, webinars now we got a number of programs but there's a constant menu of uh, free webinar training um, services um, these are these are free services as well like we're funded by the province of manitoba where they're a strategic partner for trade and western diversification federally in terms of delivering small business support across the province so i really enjoy the uh, research training um, it, you guys do provide uh, also uh, emails about what's coming up and what's going on with the world trade. Uh, I just have to say I love those those emails because there's it's very diverse. And, um, you know, it's funny, you know, 70 percent may not pertain to me, but there'll be that bit yep. there, you know. So there's something for every company in there. And it's uh, really interesting and exciting. So this is going to happen on another show because they actually do a lot of stuff with climate. So we are going to be talking to Derek again for the World Trade Center. And you, I just have to say thank you so much for coming on uh, to Evolution Greenworks. Uh, our evolutionaries uh, really enjoy learning about what's happening here in Manitoba and understanding better about our community around us, you know, and you know, I think it's so exciting what you're doing with Biz for Climate. I encourage everybody to go and take a look. And businesses, please sign up. www.bizforclimate.com. Thank you so much for being with us today, Derek. Thank you, Lorena. I really enjoyed the conversation and the opportunity to get this message out there. Um, you know, we, we welcome all businesses. There's room for everyone uh, to get on board with this, and, and we'd love to talk to you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. That's all for today's show. Thank you, everybody. See you for episode 13. Yeah.